Good evening, everyone. I'm meteorologist Dave Snyder with you on this 29th of March. Thanks for watching Alaska Weather with us tonight. As always, we encourage you to stay up to date with your local weather information and however you get that, it's a good thing to have. You can always give us a call at 1-800-472-0391. That's the Alaska Weather Information Line. Find us online at weather.gov slash Alaska. Click on the page to get your local forecast information from your office in Fairbanks, Juneau, or Anchorage, or the Alaska Aviation Weather Unit the Alaska Pacific River Forecast Center, or if you feel a little bit of a tremor, you might want to check in with Tsunami.gov and get the very latest information there on earthquakes in the region. If you can't find what you're looking for, please feel free to call me uh, or uh, send me an email, david.snyder at noaa.gov. I'm happy to help you any way I can. Here's a look at the hazardous weather outlook for tonight. Uh, winter weather advisories have returned to the northwest coast. Uh, wind and some light snow is generally going to be the problem for areas around the Bering Strait communities and to the Chukchi coast. Uh, we're talking about winds that may gust from about 45 to 50 miles per hour as that next wave comes up the western Bering Sea. We're also going to look for a little bit of light snow. Most areas will be talking about one to three inches of snow in places like Gamble up to Shishmaref and north of Kotzebue to Point Hope. Uh, you may see as much as four inches of snow and this will generally go from about noon on Friday until uh, the afternoon hours on Saturday. But for a little bit later on, we'll start in the evening to the, uh, the evening hours of Friday up to the evening hours of Saturday for the Chukchi Coast here. And generally the same conditions are expected. Uh, gusts to about 45 miles per hour and generally about one to three inches of snow, maybe as much as four in some cases there. But uh, this will generally be a light snow issue and a wind issue blowing that snow around and reducing your visibility at times to about a half mile or less. So be prepared for some changing conditions there, starting as early as about lunchtime tomorrow across the Bering Strait communities and into the Kotzebue Sound region. Let's take a look down toward Falls Pass where the weather's a little bit nicer. And boy, has it really been nice. High pressure is in control of the Aleutian chain right now. Uh, the winds are pretty light, even in Falls Pass, and the skies are fair, and uh, you get beautiful pictures like this. Uh, not every day do you see weather that seems to be as tranquil as it is here, at least in this one image that we saw uh, earlier this afternoon out of Falls Pass. So uh, if you're in Falls Pass, how you doing? Thanks for watching tonight, and uh, hope you're enjoying your Alaska weather. Thanks for sharing. Here's a look at the satellite picture now. Uh, Thursday afternoon, high pressure is in command of the Aleutian chain and Falls Pass. Uh, you'll notice that ridge extends all the way into the east. And underneath this tonight, and uh, certainly this afternoon, we've got some low stratus clouds here across the chain. We've seen some areas of fog developing. That's pretty much going to be the story for at least the next two to three days in this region. Watch for pockets of fog extending into the west coast and maybe even out into the northern gulf as winds remain fairly light there. You can see that next wave of weather, though, already developing across the western Bering Sea. It will continue working its way up across the, the western Bering and, and kind of focusing its area of low pressure here up across eastern parts of Siberia. So this is going to put the Bering Strait communities in that healthy southerly flow. It's something you've seen time and time again this season, uh, just a pattern that won't quit. So that will have impacts on that ice edge, gradually melting and shifting that northward a little bit and also helping to keep that flow that we were looking at yesterday across the Beaufort Sea moving from east to west. Uh, pretty common for that to happen uh, with that typical flow there, and the winds will continue to be generally out of the east and southeast as that low pressure strengthens a little bit. As we get toward the end of the week, though, we're also going to watch for high pressure to develop a little bit more in the interior. In fact, the entire pattern across Alaska is changing and that's going to put more parts of Alaska, especially mainland Alaska, back in that northerly flow. So it'll be a drier flow, a colder flow, and that could mean outflow for places that, that typically suffer from those gap kind of winds. There are a taku wind, uh, perhaps around Juneau. So we'll be watching for that. It's not a sure thing yet, but watching for that as we head into the weekend, maybe even early next week with that gap flow setting up in the region. Once again, here's the satellite loop. Fair weather clouds for the most part 
uh, hit and miss across the eastern interior, but there is a little bit of snow up across northwest. Ambler was picking up a little bit of snow earlier today, and you can see on the surface chart that uh, it's just kind of hit and miss around the region there, including parts of the central interior, southwest, down to uh, oh, about uh, Nunavak Island, uh, parts of uh, Amonic and northward. We're seeing a little bit of snow in the region around the Bering Strait, uh, just north of St. Lawrence Island. Uh, and a little bit of light rain, at times maybe mixed with snow across southern parts of southeast. That is going to continue. And as conditions cool off, don't be surprised to have those slick surfaces that we were talking about again yesterday. So still trying to act like winter out there, even in southeast. Here's a look at the forecast for tonight. High pressure will be the big boss out across the west. 1,037 millibars in those two parallel lines here. That means areas of fog possible all the way from Nunavak Island west of the Pribilovs down south of the chain. And you can see the effects of this ridge. You notice these lines kind of curving out here. The, uh, the power of uh, the high pressure system points away from it. And you can see that uh, ridge stretching out and away from that high pressure center here. And it's doing that right here too. So a lot of control from this big stable air mass across western Alaska and the central Gulf. Low pressure though has interrupted that just a little bit, just south of Prince William Sound. At 1,023 millibars, it has a weak trough cutting into that. And you'll notice how those lines are kind of pointing toward the low pressure system here. This is the valley in the area, and this is the area that's kind of the ridge top or the mountain. In uh, the southern parts of southeast, a little bit of light snow, maybe mixed with rain, will be possible tonight. Some light snow around the Alaska Range, perhaps around the Talkeenas, but not so much along the road system. It looks like most areas uh, will continue to see generally dry weather. Across the Western Brooks Range, pockets of light snow there in Dukatsevu Sound in the Bering Strait communities. And here is one of the previous waves of weather up across the north. We're going to continue the steady stream of southwesterly flow into northwestern Alaska as we head into your Friday. With warmer air trying to work its way in, it's a pretty good snowmaker when that happens. And we'll see the winds kind of pick up a little bit more as the pressure gradient packs in a little bit more. So that south and westerly flow is going to pick up. And remember, we are talking about gusts coming up in the Bering Strait communities, probably starting as early as noontime to see some of those effects in your region. But for St. Lawrence Island and the western end of the Seward Peninsula, Wales, out toward Kotzebue Sound, maybe even Nome a little bit, uh, you're going to be looking at wind gusts up to 45, maybe 50 miles per hour, and the opportunity to see some snow, maybe as much as one to three inches and perhaps as much as four in a few spots. Up across the Chukchi Coast, the snow will be gradually working its way from south to north. And all of this is translating north and east, so uh, by Saturday that'll spread out a little bit more. We're still going to be looking at some light snow around the Alaska Range as well, perhaps around the Talkeetnas again for Friday afternoon. That weak little wave across the northern Gulf is still there. It's just this little eddy kind of in the atmospheric river sitting right here and doing its own thing, really not going anywhere. But you'll notice the threat for heavier precipitation or additional precipitation in that point uh, for southeast is kind of uh, falling apart there. In fact, the clouds may break up just a little bit more as well. So maybe some room for some sunshine. Out west, that controlling ridge of high pressure is still there, and those two dashed lines uh, still tell us that fog may be possible through Friday afternoon. Here is Saturday now, and that high is not getting any, any weaker. It's up to 1,041 millibars now. This is a big stuff. It's just it's happy as a clam sitting there just west of McCoryuk. And once again, these dashed lines indicate uh, troughs of low pressure. So these are the weaker parts of that air mass. And if we were going to see clouds and wind develop, this would be a reason why that's happening. Uh, low pressure sitting right across southeast. We'll keep an opportunity for some rain and snow in the region, but we're also going to watch for some of those drainage winds to develop as we get into the weekend. And across the interior, we're still looking at snow. This is that disturbance out across the western Bering and eastern Asia flowing up and over the ridge and making its way into the central interior. So Fairbanks, you could be looking at another opportunity for some snow. And so could Nome and down toward McGrath and Amonic. Uh, the YK Delta North Slope community still looking at some light snow chances there. And remember, the winter weather advisory at this point for the Chukchi Coast is still going into Saturday afternoon. So there will still be some gusty winds in the region. And a careful eye to the northwest coast will have seen this already, but I'm going to point it out because that's why I'm here. It looks like the winds will have turned to more of a northwesterly flow. As the high pressure system was here, kind of moved a little bit westward. That angles the flow over a little bit more. So now instead of getting that southwesterly warmer, wetter flow, you're getting an onshore colder flow into the Chukchi Coast. So keep in mind, temperatures are going to be cooling down. And this is the very first step in what we see is kind of a, a overall pattern change going into the next couple days. In fact, so as this high continues to creep its way west and north, we're going to all see that northerly wind 
drop southward, and that is going to continue working through the mainland in the south central and, and help to change the weather in southeast as well. So uh, that high is going to really change up what we've been experiencing just for the last week or so as that continues to sit out across the bearing. That is a look at the early parts of your Saturday. Let's take a look at temperatures, and again, the change uh, will not have happened at this point. We're looking at Friday morning. It's still fairly mild conditions, I'd say, for southeast. Upper 20s and lower 30s, mainly across the outer coast for those temps above freezing. For south central and Prince William Sound, teens and 20s there. Prince William Sound, uh, Cordova, Valdez, Whittier, all in the upper 20s, it looks like. Homer about 25, Kodiak near 33. Bristol Bay temperatures in the teens and 20s. St. Paul about 26. And Dutch Harbor in Alaska in the lower 30s for you tonight. Uh, Middle Tanana Valley, Fairbanks North Pole, uh, you're looking at about 15 degrees there, up toward uh, Bettles near 4, 13 in Ambler. Arctic Village, Anaktivik Pass, a little bit colder, closer to zero. In fact, Arctic Village might even be sub zero at 8 below. And the North Slope communities, anywhere from 5 above to 5 below around Cactova, Kotzebue Sound, and Kivalina, uh, you're looking at about 15 degrees tonight. 17 in Nome, 26 around Gamble and Savunga and teens and 20s for the southwestern coast, Nunavak Island 21. High temperatures tomorrow will be mild in southwest, looking at uh, upper 20s and lower 30s for many communities. King Salmon about 37, Kodiak 41. Prince William Sound could make it into the 40s. Uh, Cook Inlet temperatures in the upper 30s has been a mild day today, very similar to that. Uh, many in southeast will make it into the 40s again for your Friday afternoon. Ketchikan, Craig, Klawak, uh, probably looking at temps in the mid to upper 40s. 42 around Haynes and Skagway. 26 of Fort Yukon for the afternoon tomorrow. Uh, teens for many across the North Slope. Uh, Prudhoe Bay out toward uh, Atkasuk, Barrow, about 14 degrees or so there on the map. 19 in Wainwright, uh, Point Hope, about 31. Uh, Shishmaref, you're looking at temps closer to 30 degrees. Nome, 29. Uh, around, uh, well, let's say Bethel, near 31 degrees. And Dillingham, temperatures back in the mid-30s there. A quick check in the morning temperature shows colder readings in the east, 20s and 30s in southeast, and uh, low 20s for many in the west. And by Saturday afternoon, 30s and 40s once again. Uh, for many in southwest, even milder. And now, aviation weather around Alaska. On to flying weather now. IFR will be fairly widespread across the Yukon Valley and down the southwestern coast. With high pressure and charge, uh, we'll see areas of fog and uh, low ceilings across uh, some areas in the west and across the chain, but at least the winds and the turbulence should not be a major factor there. Up north, a uh, little bit more wind moving into the Bering Strait region. That'll keep some warmer air moving over colder surfaces and likely to produce some areas of stratus with that. Uh, watch for that to improve a little bit. Uh, as we get into a period of the year where the sun angle is a little bit higher, uh, some of the low ceilings will gradually uh, burn off, as we like to say. MVFR, though, still fairly widespread across most of the interior parts of the Chukchi Coast, Kotzebue Sound, and Norton Sound, with IFR lingering around Nome and Shishmaref and uh, uh, Kotzebue itself. Look for generally clear conditions there across most of southeast, or at least fair skies out across the central and western chain and generally MVFR with IFR creeping in from the west by Saturday morning. A fairly widespread swath of IFR from uh, the Yukon Delta into the upper Yukon Valley. Parts of the Copper River Valley also looking at some MVFR conditions with generally VFR across the Kenai Peninsula to Kodiak Island. A little bit of MVFR for some of the higher terrain just east of Juneau all the way up toward Haines and Skagway around Kotzebue Sound. IFR conditions continue there and by Saturday afternoon a little bit of improvement, but a little more IFR, though, is actually moving its way into the upper Yukon Valley in the middle Tanana Valley. Parts of Norton Sound, St. Lawrence Island, out toward uh, Nunavak uh, Island, as well as areas out in the west still lingering with MVFR conditions, while VFR uh, generally around the Gulf Coast communities, Bristol Bay and southwest. Here's a look at your past conditions in, in detail for your Friday. IFR conditions expected to start in Anaktivik and Adigan Pass with a little bit of improvement during the day. Lake Clark and Merrill Pass, we expect to see VFR conditions through most of the day. Same should be said for Rainy Pass. Uh, Windy Pass expected to hold at IFR in the morning with some improvements during the afternoon. Isabel Pass, we expect to see start at IFR with improvement throughout the day, just like Mentassa Pass, uh, ending up at MVFR by the afternoon. Anita Pass, we expect to see marginal conditions really most of the day. Portage Pass should improve beyond that to VFR. And Chilkoot and White Pass also looking for improvement during the day with a morning start in the marginal category. 
Freezing levels show that next wave of warmth coming in from the western bearing, and you can see that pushing levels up to about 6,000 feet just south of Kiska. The surface freezing line still south of uh, Bristol Bay and over Kodiak Island, and then rounding the curve through southeast with uh, the most previous wave of warmth that's uh, still trying to work its way out of the eastern gulf. Most of the state starts below freezing tomorrow morning. Icing potential is listed around isolated moderate for the daytime tomorrow. Levels around Barrow around 5,000 feet and higher. And then once you get into the Chukchi Sea, you're above 8,000 feet. And that level kind of holds as you move down the southwestern coast. In the northern gulf, uh, we have levels there above 2,000 feet to about above 5,000 feet to areas across the Copper River Valley and then northward there. So lingering uh, areas of uh, colder air there and just a little bit of moisture higher up. Here's a jet stream. High pressure sitting across the Beaufort Sea and across the Bering Sea is giving us a little bit of a wiggle in the jet stream here as things get sorted out. High pressure will become more of the dominant force in the uh, coming days here and into next week as this is uh, kind of undergoing a little bit of a pattern change. Uh, that same system, though, is pushing down the main Pacific jet stream well south and out toward Hawaii there, so we get more of a southwestern flow coming into the Pacific Northwest. Uh, that's bringing a little more moisture to parts of the west coast. At 9,000 feet, you can see our high pressure system south of St. Matthew and west of McCorrick and north of Unalaska and Dutch Harbor. That's giving us a more of a west and northwesterly flow down the west coast of Alaska, feeding into low pressure in the Gulf. An onshore flow then for southeast around 20 to 25 knots. High pressure giving us light winds for most of the interior, a gentle west flow for the North Slope. And at uh, 3,000 feet, a little bit of a stronger flow south and westerly is coming into the Kotzebue Sound region and the North Slope. We get into slighter winds across the western Alaska range, about 10 to 20 knots or so with high pressure once again across the uh, Bering Sea. Wind speeds around that uh, really pick up pretty quickly on the north side, 30 to 40 knots, and more of an easterly flow across the Aleutians ranging from 15 to 25. For southeastern Alaska, we're still looking at an onshore flow here, uh, but wind speeds right now are fairly light, about uh, 10 to 15 knots or so across most of the panhandle. So what happens with turbulence? Well, we had a pretty good day for today. As we were talking about yesterday, there was no significant turbulence threat of any widespread nature, it looked like, for this day Thursday. But for Friday, things begin to change with wind speeds picking up across the north and western bearing. And as that faster flow starts to run into land over St. Lawrence Island, the western end of Seward Peninsula, and uh, the upper Kobuk and Noatak Valleys out toward uh, Cape Hope, uh, Point Hope and uh, Point Lay, we start to see some considerable moderate showing up. Same goes for Kodiak Island and the Central Chain. Ophiuchus. Hey there, stargazers. I'm Dean Regis, astronomer from the Cincinnati Observatory. And I'm James Albury, director of the Kika Silva Plot Planetarium in Gainesville, Florida. Hey, Dean, what are your thoughts about the number 13? Well, it's the square root of 169, and <laughs> if you add up all the eight major planets and five dwarf planets in our solar system, you'd end up with 13 and, uh, oh, this is our 13th episode of the year. Very good. And I have one more piece of Triskaidecka trivia for you. Did you know that the sun actually passes through 13 constellations? Ah, uh, yes. There's one constellation in the zodiac that's not officially part of the group. And I like this constellation because it has a weird name. The 13th constellation we're referring to is Ophiuchus. And we have a really nice planet moon Scucci coming up next week. So, what are we talking about? Let's show you. There are currently 88 officially recognized constellations in modern astronomy. Twelve of these constellations have particular significance because during the course of a year, the sun, moon, and planets appear to drift through these background stars. The constellations along this path are referred to as the zodiac. Zodiac, loosely translated, means circle of animals. And the constellations of the zodiac in order are as follows. Aries, Taurus, Gemini, Cancer, Leo, Virgo, Libra, Scorpius, Sagittarius, Capricornus, Aquarius, and Pisces. Between Scorpius and Sagittarius, however, there's a 13th constellation that the sun passes through on its journey. In reality, the Earth is the one doing the traveling. The sun just appears to move through this constellation as we orbit. This constellation is Ophiuchus, and he is often represented as a man holding a snake. The nearby constellations, Serpens Cauda and Serpens Caput. 
His name is derived from the Greek for serpent bearer, and on ancient star maps, this constellation was called Serpentarius. According to legend, Ophiuchus was the son of Apollo and was taught the art of medicine by the centaur Chiron. Ophiuchus was said to have killed a snake, and no sooner had he done this, a second snake came along with a medicinal herb in its mouth. The live snake gave the dead snake the herb, restoring the dead snake to life. After seeing this, Ophiuchus snatched a little of the herb from the snake, and from that point was able to restore life to the dead. Pluto, the god of the netherworld, didn't like the fact that Ophiuchus had this ability, and he complained to Jupiter. Jupiter sent his pet Aquila, the eagle, after Ophiuchus with a lightning bolt. The lightning bolt struck Ophiuchus, killing him. Jupiter, not wanting Ophiuchus' knowledge to fade into oblivion, placed the medically gifted serpent bearer among the stars. Before being brought into the heavens, Ophiuchus became good friends with Orion the hunter. Years later, Orion, boasting about what a great hunter he was, decided to prove his ability by killing all the creatures of the earth. Gaia, the goddess of the earth, sent Scorpius the scorpion to stop it. The resulting sting from the scorpion killed Orion. Ophiuchus, seeing what happened and having the power to restore life, revived Orion and asked Jupiter to place Orion on the opposite side of the sky, away from the scorpion. Ophiuchus promised to keep watch over the scorpion so it wouldn't try to escape, and to this day, the star marking the foot of Ophiuchus can be seen just above Scorpius. This star is along the path the sun travels during the month of December, thus making him, albeit unofficially, one of the constellations of the zodiac. So, let's check out what's happening with the planets next week. We have our sky set up for Saturday morning, April 7th, shortly before sunrise. If you look to the southeast, you'll see the waning gibbous moon forming an almost straight line with Saturn and Mars. All three objects will be near the teapot of Sagittarius. The ring planet Saturn is super close to the moon that morning. They'll be less than two degrees apart. That's two planets and our nearest neighbor in space playing a game of space tag near the 13th constellation of the Zodiac. And it's all there for you to see if you keep looking, looking up. And now, marine weather around Alaska. Time for a quick check of your sea ice edge. And as we were talking about earlier today and also yesterday, uh, the southwestern coast here will continue to be eroded and melted, uh, generally along the southern coast pushing northward here. So look for more changes across north-facing coastlines along the Chukchi as we have that persistent southwesterly flow at least into early parts of the weekend because it looks like high pressure that's controlling our weather here is still working its way westward and will allow more of a northerly flow as we get toward the end of the weekend. That's going to push colder air into the interior, but it's also going to start moving some of this ice around a little bit more. So places that have polinias or at least less concentrated areas of ice, including those just north of Shishmaref and the Chukchi Coast, may see some of that ice move southward once again. So keep your eyes on some changes as we head toward the weekend there, and you can always get the very latest at weather.gov slash anchorage slash ice. On to the weather in southeast. Northerly is in Lynn Canal, 25 knots with a 5-foot sea. Down to the Clarence Strait, you can see an easterly flow, 15 knots and a 3-foot sea there with an easterly offshore flow from Yakutat to Gustavus and Cross Town. Northwesterly south of Sitka to the Dixon entrance, 20 knots there with 7 to 8-foot seas as we go through your Friday. More of a widespread northerly flow for all of the panhandle as we go into Saturday. Anywhere from 25 to 30 knots from Stevens Passage northward toward the Lynn Canal. Uh, seas coming up to six foot there, and watch for some gustier winds to develop once again as we get that trough set up just in the right spot and high pressure strengthening up north. Northerlies across the outer coast, anywhere from 15 to 20 knots, and you're looking at about five to six foot seas in most areas on the outer coast for your Saturday. For South Central and inside Prince William Sound, look for a northerly wind at 20 knots with a 3-foot sea, anywhere from about 5 to 8-foot seas across the northern Gulf, 15 to 30 knot winds, with the strongest winds over the Barrens on that northwesterly flow up to 30 knots. Inside of Cook Inlet, generally light winds, 10 knots there and 2-foot seas on Friday, and not much of a change on Saturday there, but the Barren Islands should see diminishing winds, 20 to 25, anywhere from 5 to 6-foot seas in the region, and light winds. Uh, about uh, northwesterly, 10 knots there, and a two-foot sea inside of Prince William Sound. 
For Friday, inside of Bristol Bay, a north wind about 10 knots and two foot seas there. Northeasterly is coming down the Bering Sea coast, down past Cold Bay and Sand Point. Uh, you're looking at north and easterly winds on the Pacific side, north and easterlies around 20 knots or so with a five to six foot sea across Kodiak Island. 20 knots uh, inside of Shelikoff Strait and 25 knots on the eastern side with six foot seas in the western gulf. For Saturday, look for a north flow inside of Bristol Bay, a stronger northeasterly flow down the Bering Sea coast to 25 knots with a seven foot sea. Uh, northerlies take over Kodiak Island, 15 to 20 knots, three foot seas inside of Shelikoff Strait and north and easterly winds coming down the uh, western parts of the Pacific coastline there, 15 to 25, five to nine foot seas are expected for Saturday. For the Aleutians, those really low winds and small seas are starting to fall apart as high pressures moving back toward the mainland here. You're getting back into the prime wind in the higher seas territory. 20 to 25 knot winds will be common across the Bering Sea coast, and seas are coming up already to about 4 to 9 feet, 11 to 12 feet out in the west. And you can see that shift taking shape across the western end of the ridge. Uh, look for east winds around 25 to 30 knots with 11 to 14 foot seas expected there on Friday across the Pacific coast. As we get into Saturday, seas are coming up even more, 17 to 18 feet as that stronger and faster flow is just kind of creeping its way in on that southern edge of the ridge. For the Bering Sea, you're looking at 25 to 30 knots, anywhere from 8 to 12 foot seas in the central and eastern chain out west. We're getting into 25 and 30 knot winds there as well. Seas could be as high as 14 feet between Kiska and Adak on Saturday. For the west coast, south and westerly winds here will continue. No surprise, that's been the same old story. 25 to 30 knots so should bring seas up to about 13 foot uh, seas or better, maybe around St. Matthew. We still have some light winds around the Kuskokwim Delta and the Pribilovs. 10 knots there with two to three foot seas for Friday. A little more of a change on Saturday. Winds still coming up a little bit more, 15 to 20 knots, four to six foot seas there in a west and southwesterly flow coming into the Yukon Delta region, 15 to 20 knots and westerlies inside Norton Sound of 20 knots there. For the North Slope, light winds around the Beaufort Sea, that's pretty good. Southerlies around 25 to 30 knots, those coming up for Friday, again blowing and drifting some of the snow around. You'll see more of an onshore flow developing across the Chukchi Sea coast, 20 to 25 knots there on Saturday, and southerly offshore winds for the Beaufort Sea, 15 to 25. Once again, winter weather advisories have been posted for the Chukchi Coast and Bering Strait communities all the way into uh, parts of Kotzebue Sound and the western end of the Seward Peninsula for areas of light snow, about one to three inches in general, maybe as much as four, and some stronger gusts developing from Friday afternoon to Friday evening. You'll see them begin in your region, and that could blow and drift some snow around there, so watch for that, and uh, rain showers should be ending in southern parts of southeast, but winds will be picking up across the north slope. <laughs> These forecasts are for planning purposes only. Call 1-800-WX-BRIEF for a formal pre-flight briefing. Always file a flight plan before you go fly. The U.S. Coast Guard Auxiliary urges you to leave a float plan with a friend or the harbor master before you go boating. <laughs>